Eric, what do you, where, where are we today? In the construction zone? Dan, we're gonna push ourselves to the right, to high performance. We're gonna get outside of our comfort zones today. I'm gonna need some training if I'm gonna, I'd actually drive those things. The importance of gets it training, we've got Tiny here. Yeah, guys, we're gonna go out there and we're gonna dig it and tear it up out there today. You guys ready? We're ready. Uh, uh, I, th I think we're ready. I'm gonna need some serious training. <laughs> Welcome back to our video series, number 6.1, Gets It Training. Dan, it's so important training. It's a key element to success in any organization. You have to understand what your training is, what the needs are of your organization and the people you're training for. If you do it correctly and you focus on some key areas, you can actually create a jump to a higher zone. Everybody wants to know what they're supposed to do to make the most efficient moves in the organization. They want to do that, give it to them with training. Great opportunity to push a jump up the curve for sure. There was a team I had one time, brand new team, and I was so gung-ho at training, I didn't do the most critical thing and I learned a valuable lesson. You gotta evaluate first and train second. I need to go in, evaluate my team, who are my gets at people, who are, who are gonna help me get those rest of the team up the ladder and make sure that we are always focused on high performance. You know, really training is about motivating, empowering, to pr improve performance. And if we measure training correctly, then we'll always have it in our budget for use of the future. Let's train. Let's let's get training today. Let's do it. Tiny. Come on, get this guy. Stop slacking off. <laughs> <We're> slacker. <laughs> A little bit slacker. I so you're really telling me I'm going in Brutus over here? Yeah, no problem. Tiny's the trainer. Listen to your trainer. Elevate yourself. Push yourself out of your comfort zone. Have fun. It's definitely going to be push me out of the comfort zone. This is not right. something I'm used to. Are you sure, Tiny? You got this. Yeah, come Dan. on, get this guy. Let's move you forward. Get this. You're get this guy. Let's see it. All right. We got three points of contact. Perfect. That's a nice scoop. That's a big scoop. Stuff right there. Now we're gonna go left joystick to the right, about three feet out of the room. Stop there. Now we're gonna go right joystick back for this one. Right joystick back. Keep going a little more. Stop there. Now right joystick to the right. All the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah, that guy. As soon as I feel it, to stop. I tap back a little bit. And then pull back hard all the way to the top right here. Hold it. Keep going straight ahead. Now hit that right to drop that mouse there. Stop the dirt. Bring it all back up. up. Reverse. Are you really in there? In that cab? Dad. <laughs> now this is a great way to motivate someone to train, doing something totally different I've never done before. You know, I feel empowered. Eric, that was great today. It was. You know, our trainer, Tiny, he used some great leadership skills like empathy. Think about it. He has to train all different types of people, so he knows how to get it done in a quick amount of time. Look at the dirt we moved in the 30 minutes. I know it. It's a lot of fun. And he, he didn't lecture us all day. We got in the classroom, he got to the point, and then he put us to work. I love the, the quick lesson in the beginning to drive the points home. Yeah, and he didn't make us feel bad. I didn't feel embarrassed at all. I had no idea how to move those sticks to do that. He didn't make me feel embarrassed. He made me feel great about what I was accomplishing. We can't talk enough about empathy. And also, have being empathetic about people having jobs. They have other things to do. Don't take the whole day and do nothing but training and leave your employees with 100 emails to answer and phone calls. And it makes them hate the training. Yeah, you know, and bring in real case studies, not just widget training, bring yep. in real case studies. You may score a big deal by the information you gain from all the people in the organization that were at that training. Take your time quality training, get your points across, don't rush it. This is very important and people are going to get a jump from this, I guarantee it. Tiny was patient with us. That helped us learn a lot about what to do with training. Hey, we're standing here with Ed. He's the owner of this establishment and he had us out here today. We're excited to be at Dig This Las Vegas. Ed, how'd you get started here? You know, uh, I've always had a childhood fascination with heavy equipment because it's so big and powerful and I mean, you know, as kids we, we all had sandboxes and we've always maintained that fascination, I think, even when, you know, we left them as young kids. Yeah, yeah, so, for sure. you know, and driving past construction sites all my life, I was like always fascinated looking in at these great operators that were running these magnificent 
engineering marbles of you know bulldozers and excavators so how do you find how do you find people like tiny a uh, top talent like that how do you, you find know him? it all starts with good people skills and you know when we employ people we look for people skills first and then their experience second and typically we teach them what to do uh, because the people skill here is the key component in order to show people a good time training is the key no question to any organization yeah. here especially i got out there and Eric got out there too. We knew nothing about this equipment, and then we're picking up basketballs and putting them in the tires. I mean, it's just amazing the training capacity you have here. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, just putting that right language across, you know, on the comms and, and getting you guys off the, off the marks is really key too. And then having a good instructor that can encourage you. Yeah, and have you leave with a great sense of achievement is, is the goal here. So. We do, we do. It's the best yeah. money spent in a long time. Dig this, Las Vegas with Ed. They're a gets-it company, no question about it. Cheers, Thanks, guys. Ed. Appreciate it. <laughs> right on, brother. Thanks, Ed. Good idea. Thanks. Thanks. Let's talk about best practices in training. First and foremost, explain why you're training. What's the vision of the company? And why is training so important? And as a leader, you should be involved in the training. Evaluate your talent while they're training. Who's understanding it? What are the topics that don't seem to have a great resolution? I like having training, more sessions, shorter periods of time. Give your employees a chance to do their job, answer their emails. Yeah, and you don't have to do the training all yourself. Get a gets a committee together. Get a group of people together that can help you find the content that is really required by your talent. I like having my whole team break into smaller groups and have them solve very specific tasks. They get good camaraderie together, the training goes by quicker, and I think they, they pull a lot more out of it. And, and guest speakers are great. A supplier, a customer, you'll learn a ton from them and so will your team members. Other departments within your organization. Walk in someone else's shoes. You'll learn so much when you do that. And then most of all, what's most important, is when you have the training moving, keep the momentum up. Keep it going. Measure it. Be able to show the value so that it won't get cut. It'll be encouraged and improved upon. Absolutely. I'm Eric. This is Dan. We're the Get the Guys. Visit us at GetTheGuys.com. See you next time.